Being competitive in the business world is a lot different today. In fact, it's different every day. Every day. Can you keep up with the change? We'll help. This is the Power Apps Academy podcast. We'll talk about anything and everything Microsoft Power Apps. Finally, you can reach capabilities that were once only reserved for high-end development tools. And with our help, you'll quickly become a pro. Let's do it. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Power, Power Apps, Apps Academy, Academy podcast. podcast. And now your hosts, Barry Abramson and Darren Neese. What do you say? Being competitive hey. in the business world is a lot. I need lot. to stop that. I had it on loop for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Darren. How's it going? You all right? Great. Great. Right, so it sounds yeah. like you just came back from a, a nice, relaxing vacation. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, up in Wales, um, a place called Pembrokeshire, and uh, it's really beautiful. It's like, uh, yeah, the corporates haven't got there yet. It's still these little quaint villages, no McDonald's, you know, so, sort of local farm shops and really, really pretty place. And I uh, was staying in the campsite that overlooked the ocean, and um, it rains quite a bit up there, so we got hit with a little bit of rain, but uh, we had some really stunning sunny days, so it was, it was uh, great fun, just the uh, time with the family, it's always a good time, so uh, yeah, back back, back to back to uh, reality, and um, yeah, it's, it's a long weekend here, so it's Sunday night, tomorrow's a public holiday, which is good. Yeah, all right. Up to? Well, I built a computer this week, and it's been nothing but trouble for me, so just in case... <laughs> I disappear or will probably end up, I'll just like sort of freeze up. If it does happen, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does, I freeze up. Just know, it'll probably take me about a minute or two, and then I'll sign back in and I'll appear again. So if that happens, I uh, just want to give everybody a warning. But uh, so this fingers week. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers <laughs> crossed. Yeah, it happened to me yesterday during my live stream, and oh, it was, God. It was, it was sort of rough for me. But um, yeah, so today. We are going to talk about, in fact, let me just bring up this thing here on the screen here. This is our app we've been building together. And Barry, this is our, what, our fourth episode? Yeah, it's the fourth one. So it seems to be uh, going quite well. So I, I, I'm trying to, trying to think back what we actually got. It seems like a, an age ago to me. So uh, can you remind me, what, what did we cover last week? Sure. So um, yeah, the, the, the first one, we just sort of introduced ourselves. The second one, we just talked about the absolute basics. I think we brought over this, this particular gallery. We created a SharePoint mm -hmm. list, we created a form. And then um, the third one um, last week was uh, we created a little drop down and we did some filtering. Um, we did some sorting and uh, we never did get around to search. So I thought we'd talk about search yeah. this time. And, and yeah, uh, this is like a good place to start. I think, I think, um, you know, just the stuff that we've covered in the last four episodes, if you're a newbie, these are fundamental things that you need to know, right? I mean, have you ever built an app where you don't use any of this stuff? Yeah, these these are the uh, your bread and butter, the meat potatoes of getting started with yeah. Power Apps. You need to learn about a gallery. You need to learn about a form, and learn how to use those together. And uh, yeah, yeah. And, and you can save yourself a lot of time if you actually know what you're doing. Um, otherwise, you might just get confused. And then yeah, there's nothing worse than being confused and sitting and staring at your screen for like an hour and going, "What the hell am I doing?" So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We just go back and watch those, and um, I, I think that's going to give you a massive. Uh, head start and you don't have to you know, otherwise you could be watching a lot of content and other videos which is great because you learn little things but uh it, it could also you know cost you a lot of time having to jump through stuff so i think this is just the fundamental stuff do it in line with anything else that you're doing but uh even, even if you uh, know your stuff i'm sure there's little tips and tricks that we've covered in here I, I know i've learned some stuff from you just as we've been covering up in these podcasts where it's like oh my god i didn't actually know that and that's cool that's going to save me some time yeah. in the future yeah, I like that. And I like, so you come from a little bit of a different background uh, that, than I do. I'm a software developer. You're more of a yeah. general IT uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, yeah, I mean, I, I do, I, I'm in IT management and have been for, for a long time, but I also do technical stuff. So, you know, this has been a sort of part-time hobby for me. And I've, uh, over the last few years, I've got into it. Uh, but I, I've nowhere near as technical as you. But I do, I, I've obviously built a few apps now. So I do, understand power apps but I, you come from a development background so you're obviously your technical depth in terms of development is a lot deeper than mine so um yeah so i i, I come from more of a you know how can we leverage this technology to uh, automate some of our processes within the business 
and allow people to you know, get things done quicker. And also, it's great to have a standard, standardized way of capturing information within your business, because if you leave it to different teams or different mechanisms of collecting data, you get data that's different. And when you've got silos of data that are formatted differently, it's always hard to report on. And then obviously, if you want to you know, drive change, you have to understand the data that you get in. So using a power app across your business collects data in a standard way. You can take that data and then leverage it to learn a bit more about your business and your users. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll go to the comments here. Uh, Victor is back. Hi there. Greetings from Valencia, Spain. Hey, Victor. Hope you're well. <laughs> Nice to have Spain. you. I love, I love Spain. I love Spain. <laughs> and if anybody else is uh, joining us, feel free to, to shout out. At least tell us where you're from and uh, what you're doing with Power Apps. And uh, I'll give you a shout yeah. out there. And I know I know we're covering specific things. We like trying to maybe keep a flow on, on what we're doing. But obviously, yeah. if, if there's anything that you guys, you know, you've joined for a reason, you might you might be wanting to know a little bit. It, it, obviously, if it's not too advanced, uh, you will, we'll do our best to cover it off in the show as well. But do ask any questions that you have. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So um, taking a look at our project here, I've got it up on the screen. And here is our gallery. Now, if I open up the coding window here, this is where we left off last week. So we had a good filter in here. And doesn't look like we're doing any type of sort. Yeah, just, um, just quickly, Derek, just, just, just as a refresh. I know we did a recap in general. But uh -huh. just to recap what we've got here. We've got a SharePoint list as a back end. We've got yeah. a few um, columns in the SharePoint list, which is some properties of our user. And then uh, we've got a on uh, that box on the left-hand side of your screen. Yeah, that, so what have we done there? Date of birth, name, all that sort of stuff, country. Uh, where the mouse is pointing over now, that's, uh, that is our um, gallery. So basically a list of everything uh, selected columns uh, in our SharePoint list is displayed there. And then when we click on any item in our gallery, on the right hand side, we've got a form that shows all the details associated to that record in the SharePoint list. So the title, phone number, email address. So that's basically what we had. And I think we had the drop down list there to filter where we said, right, if you know, we, we only want to show people that are in the UK, you know, drop that down and then it's uh, so go back and have a look at the videos if you want to see how that works. But that's what we're working from now, just so you know, you don't get lost when you look at the day. What the hell are you guys actually doing here? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. you know, one thing that I always like to do with my gallery if there's things that you always do to almost every single gallery, let me know what you think. Have you ever worked with template fill? Yeah, I, I, yeah, it took me, yeah, I, I've, and we're talking about the color uh the background right uh, within the gallery uh, i've used it actually in a, in a recent app because i wanted to um you know when i had specific orders ones that have, had been completed i wanted to do, change them to gray um or if there were ones that were in progress green all that sort of stuff so that template fill um was really handy for that sort of stuff and it's nice to be able to differentiate in your list so you know oh you know uh, select the color in the box uh based on whatever you're doing yeah, so whenever you hear the word template while working with gallery, it's talking about an individual item within the gallery. So whatever you change for that template. So if you're trying to make, let's say, a label inside your gallery, take up the full width or the full height, you could say uh, in, inside, let's say for this uh, little label here, if I wanted that to take up the full width, um, over here on the, uh, on the width, I go over here to the right side, click on the word width, and I get this 285. Now, it doesn't have to be a number. We can type some code in here that would evaluate to a number, such as if I say parent within an item within the gallery, the first item is the only one that you can edit, of course, right? So you say parent. Now, that will give us a reference to the gallery. Okay, so I say parent, and I can say template. Okay, so whenever you, and you see it took up the full width there. All right. um, so we're using the word template there. So it's talking about an individual item within the gallery. So if I click on the gallery itself and then go find the property that I was just, that we were just talking about the template fill. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it's set up to be white. Now, a lot of times what you want to do is put some logic in here and based on the logic, you can do different things. Okay. So for example, and I think we had mentioned, we want to go over the if statement because I don't really think that we've gone over that yet. 
Yeah. And uh, an if statement, or it's pretty much a, a function. Everything you use in, inside of Power Apps is going to be a function that you put in, in code here. So, for example, um, if I were to type uh, if, okay, if takes at least two parameters, sometimes three. The third parameter is optional. Typically, you do provide full three parameters. Now, the first parameter is going to be a Boolean value. Uh, Barry, are you familiar with what Boolean, Boolean means? If you ever hear Boolean, yes. do you yeah. Yeah, yeah, and this is an important one, right? Because it comes up a lot in Param. So Boolean oh, is just yes, no, oh, right? Okay. Yes, no. This is either you know, a binary uh, response. Yeah, so if I want to know, see, what I want to do is I, I always like to color whichever item in the, the gallery is selected, I want to change its color. So that's what I'm trying to do here. How is it, Barry, that I could know if this I, the one particular item is selected? Do you know that? Uh, uh, if one, if um, this item got selected, <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, what a guess. That's, you're okay. actually right. Wow. <laughs> it's selected. All right. Very good. And you know what? When you learn stuff, it's actually, I don't know if you remember your time back at school, but good teachers always ask a question before they tell you stuff. I probably need to do that more because I, I, I have this personal belief, like when somebody asks you a question, even if you don't know it, uh, but you happen to know it. Okay. But if yeah. you don't know it, it's good to even be asked if you've never, if you don't even know the answer, because your brain sort of goes to the place in your brain that it would expect to be there. And it's like, yeah. well, I have a blank there. I don't know. You just did it and you, you yeah. found the information yeah. there in your brain, and, right? And a lot of the time you find that it's a logical, yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's a logical response, right? If this item is selected and, and try it, right? Because there's loads of things. Like sometimes I'll be like, shit, what is it? Um, excuse me. But uh, if they, they, um, we'll have to edit that start out. typing something in. <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, then it comes up and you go, oh, okay, that, that is an, an option and you can just follow through. So uh, definitely, yeah, just try stuff as well. Yeah. But so, so this, if this item dot is selected, um, it, so that's this item. Can you just talk a little bit about this item? What, what does that actually mean again? So um, the, the keyword, this item, and it has to do with the context in which you use it. So you're going to be using inside of a gallery and we're working within uh, every particular row. There will be this little expression will be evaluated. When I say evaluated, it means it's going to be sort of run or, or we'll sort of test it to see what the value is. Okay. So that this item is the current record in question. And okay. then that question is run for every single one of these. So it's the current uh, row. Yeah. And is it only applicable to galleries? this item or is it also in forms i would imagine if they were to create another control like a gallery because you have other repeater you have uh yeah, different it's a controls. repeater it's, yeah so so because it's a repeater it's this item in the gallery the form isn't really a repeater it's just showing you uh what's the what the parent is what the selected item is right the details of that so you you have other controls that that you could provide a list okay like a list box a combo box a drop down a data yeah. a data table control these are all things that you could give it a table worth of values or an array of or a list of values but the gallery is special because it's the only control that i know of that they have out there that you can actually put code inside of for each of mm. the rows so to answer your question I think this is the only way you can use that this item is inside of a gallery. I can't think of any other controls and I hope they, they create more controls like this, but I think mm. that, I think that's the only way you can use that. So, um, okay. I do see a comment come in here. Is it possible to identify if this item is the first item? Um, and that's a good question. Let me, uh, Roberto, thanks for the question. I'm going to answer that here in just a moment. Okay. And I just sort of want to get through this. If then else, uh, so we just sort of tackle one thing at a time, but I'm going to come back to you. So we have the, the this item is selected. Okay. So the very first parameter, and we talk about passing parameters into something. We're talking about a function. And whenever you have some code in the Power FX language here, we're using parentheses, you're passing parameters, and you separate those parameters with commas. So the very first one is going to be a Boolean. This is selected is going to give us a true or false value. So sometimes I'll see people say is selected equals true. And that's not really, I mean, it's okay if you did that. It's not really necessary because we already have a true or false value. 
So if it's true, I always like the background or the fill, such as template fill, to be a uh, light yellow. So, so just to cover off there, where you said if this item dot is selected, you could have said equals true, but you don't have to put that. Yeah, in. you could have. Yeah, I could have yeah. said true. Yeah, maybe maybe leave it in because it, it just sort of it helps people. Um, yeah, if if it helps it. you learn, absolutely. Um, coming from a programmer uh, background, computer programmer, it would be it would be seen as redundant and sort of frowned on. Um, but you know, we're not all software developers though, either, yeah. you know, yeah. we're, some well, it, of it, us helps, it helps you just understand. So the boolean, it's a boolean, it's either true or false. So we've said, if this is selected, then uh, if that is true, then yeah. you know, you go into the if statement. Yeah. And if you look at this equal sign and uh, so the power FX languages is, is sort of like a programming language. Okay. So also the equal sign. That itself is called in programming languages called an operator. And an operator like the equal sign, greater than, less than, it will give you a Boolean value as well. So that's why we're, again, getting a Boolean value even by doing that equals true. So that's the first parameter that you're going to uh, provide in an if function. And then the other two, the, the, the second one is if it is true, what do you want to have happen? Or what do you want to return from that function? So a function, uh, functions typically return a value. They don't have to. Like we could use the function back that will take us back to the previous screen. That's not, I, I don't know that it's really returning any value. But uh, if you ever use the function called patch, if you're a beginner, maybe you haven't used the patch function. The patch function allows you to update a record, okay? It will actually return a value. A lot of people don't realize it. it actually returns that record that was updated. So if you ever need a patch something, a patch of one record, and then throw that value into a variable, you could actually use the value that's returned from that. So just thought I'd uh, give you that as a bonus. <laughs> so the second parameter, this light yellow here, is what it's gonna return if this is true. And then the other one is the else block, um, which is if this is false, then it's gonna do this. And, and uh, because it's a template fill, it's expecting a color in the if statement, right? So if this logical yes. test is true or false, then um, return a color. You couldn't put something else in there, right? It has to be a color. Yeah, so in, in this context of the template fill, it is expecting a color. However, we could use a if then else. Check this out. I can copy this, and I can have a little label inside this gallery, and what we could do inside this um, this label here for the text. Now, this is not a color. I'm going to paste this in. And instead of providing colors, I can return strings. Okay. And I could say this is selected. Okay. Can you yeah. see down here this one is selected? <laughs> it's colored in yellow, and it actually says this is selected. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's cool. So, but but so the the template fill is a color property. Therefore, you can only use the color. Um, yeah. And with the other one, it's yeah, you know, you're not limited to. Uh, yeah, you, you you're putting a text in. So, I know I've got a little bit confused when trying to set uh, colors and trying to put a different you know type of value in there, and it doesn't work out. Yeah. And perhaps you know we we could do a whole. Um episode on colors because there's all kinds of functions that you can use for colors you don't have mm. to uh you know give it a name you have the hexadecimal value yeah. you could um use you could take a color and do a color fade yeah. and you can either and that's them. what they do by default don't they they always put color fade no, i've never used the color fade i always just replace it with a color but if you look at the default it normally has fade whatever so i'd be quite interested to see how that actually works because uh, i don't really yeah. use it in my apps what, what's sort of cool is if you have a color and you've got something in your interface where you want to fade it very gradually, you can have a slider control. You can slide that and it could fade it on a degrees and you can do some really cool stuff with that. Yeah, Sounds like an interesting topic to cover. Yeah, so let's let's um, look at uh, Roberto's question here. Is it possible to identify this item is the first item in the gallery? And I would say yes, is it possible? And uh, what I'm going to do here in order to answer this question, I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to insert a label at the top. And then what I'm going to say here is um, I'm going to compare two things. 
I'm going to compare what it is in the, the first item. So um, let's get this little border here. Okay. And let's open this up a little bit. And what I'm going to say here is um, I need the name of the gallery. So I'll grab that. And we'll say the gallery dot selected dot ID. Is that the same as gallery dot all items? That's going to give us all the items that are in the gallery. And we could use a function called first. Okay, so it's going to give us the first record out of the gallery. And then now that we have the record, we can say dot ID. Look what it says here. It says true. It actually gave us that Boolean value. So, you know, what we could do is, um, you know, this isn't very user friendly. You know, the, the a user may not want to see true or false. Like, what's that about? Well, we could put another if statement in here. If we already know this has given us a Boolean value. If that's true, you say the first item has been selected. Okay, and then I'm going to change it up a little bit and say we're not even going to provide an else. That's it. So if I, if I click on something else, there will be nothing in there. Wow, that's Good. pretty cool. We, yeah. Uh, and when, you, when you've uh, – just go back to the, the snippet of code that you entered to get sure. that working. So uh, so if gal, gal, gallery or gallery contacts dot selected dot ID, is that dot ID the same – ID that's sort of hidden in SharePoint. Uh, that is a, a row ID. So that that's the match. It is, that, right? and it's always going to be unique, which is important here. So we could have compared, let's say, this. Um, what is in this uh, value here? We could have we could have grabbed any of the values in here. So there's the ID. It's always going to be unique. We could have compared phone numbers or anything really. But it's yeah. always good to reference ID because you know it's going to be unique. Yeah. You can, that that ID column, sorry about that. Uh, that ID column is that is that something that's generated by SharePoint automatically, or did we create that? I can't remember now. It is, it is. We just uh, unhid it, didn't we? Because you went in there and you said show the the ID column, which was I did. In fact, awesome. that's the very first thing I do whenever I create a list. Um, mm -hmm. Is I'll go in here and say in the add column. Uh, menu, I'll go hide show columns and I'll make sure that ID is selected and I'll move it all the way to the top. So always see it there because it's sort of um, helpful while you debug, like if, if, if you don't know, maybe something's going on. Let's say here within this gallery, we, we could, um, I'm going to add in another label here, insert label. I'm going to put this in here, maybe to, uh, to the side and I'll write justify it. And it already, ha it already has the this item.id. Look at that. So there's all the IDs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and um, how often do you actually interact with the ID of a SharePoint list row? Like to, to pull out IDs? Or is it just something that I do it all the time? It? I do it all the time because it's if you have any database training, it's what's called a primary key. Mm -hmm. And it is whenever you work with databases, uh, records within a database table, such as the SharePoint list in this case, um, you need to know what the unique identifier is for that. And um, typically in any database table that you create, it needs to have a primary key. So most people don't know this, but SharePoint actually is using a SQL server uh, underneath the scenes there for its, for its data. Mm -hmm. You know, Yeah. So, um, and typically when, when you're creating stuff in um, SQL Server, there is a field called identity. If you've ever worked with Microsoft Access, it's called an auto number. Mm -hmm. um, but you create an identity type of column. And that's the first thing I do when I create a database table in SQL Server. I'll create a table and I'll create ID, just how they do it in uh, SharePoint here. Uh, uppercase, identifier, ID. And then I said as, as a, an identity. And it just auto increments. And if you don't do something like that, there's some database people, they'll, they'll do something else like a date timestamp. Yeah. Um, I don't really like that because it could, you know, somebody's inserting something at the same time. It could come in at the exact same time. You never know. Mm -hmm. you, but, you know, you got milliseconds in there, but still there could be a chance somebody could come at the same time and 
add a record. So it really wouldn't be unique unless you append other things in there. Um, another thing people do is use a GUID or a globally unique identifier. Have you ever seen those before? Yes, those long, horrible, long numbers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Um, if I go into some, sometimes you'll see a GUID, but what a GUID looks like, let me just show this real quick. I'll bring another label over. I love adding random labels to my Power Apps screen here. And you can say uh, GUID. It's actually, I believe it's a function here. Yeah. So right. this is going to be a unique identifier. Uh, you working in IT, you're probably used to seeing mm -hmm. GUIDs in, in uh, the Windows network. Yeah, system. Active Directory user uses. Yeah, stuff. there's all yeah. kinds of stuff. So, and that is guaranteed to be unique. And what it does is it goes to the Mac. I believe the MAC address for the network card is being mm -hmm. used, whatever system that, that you're on. In this case, we're probably dealing with the the cloud server and, and Microsoft system that's great. And it also takes the date timestamp and creates something like crazy unique. Um, so, so, so that grid is from the SQL backend for that particular record that you just called there. What, what is that actually referencing? Oh, no, it's, that, you know, to advance that, okay. So this is, how we created this is we use this GUID function. Now, how Power Apps gets it, I can't really say for sure without right. doing. I can do some speculation for you, um, but um, so, so 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 that's actually just generated a good for us. It's not actually referencing a good related to the record that we clicked on there. Right. Okay. Okay. It's just generating a good. Okay. Fine. Yeah. That's useful. Useful to know that you can just generate one that you could use. But a uh, quick question: Going back to, I know we spoke about IDs and the SharePoint list. Uh -huh. Do you use IDs? Let's say you had. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you might want to reference an order in one list and maybe a customer in another list. And then do you link the primary keys? And you know, does, is that what the ID is used for as well? Or I do. So, for example, let me show you a typical database diagram. So over on my channel on Saturdays, what I do is I go through and I'm right now I'm teaching people how to, I, that's pretty much what I do on my channel. I, I teach people go through of how to build a full system. Right now we're doing an IT ticketing system, service desk, help desk, trouble ticket. There's all kinds of different names it goes under, but the, here's a full ERD diagram and ERD stands for entity relationship diagram. So pretty much what you're going to find in an ERD diagram is you're going to find all your database tables and you're going to see um, hopefully all, all of your columns, but most importantly, you're always going to see the primary key and then a foreign key. So, um, you know, Barry, you, you work in IT. I'm sure you've worked with a lot of ticketing systems, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody needs some help with something. There's going to be a ticket generated. You have some software to, to manage that. So here's, this is pretty much a ticket table. It's for requests. Um, so in all my tables, you can see at the very top, there's going to be an ID, like I told you. Now, over in other tables, you'll see some things like, like right here. Um, if you see a line between tables, Okay, you'll see a, uh, so um, with request assignments. So if a ticket comes in, Barry, we work in the IT department and so something comes in. I know only Barry handles that type of stuff. I'm going to assign it to you. I This database table here called request assignments is going to keep track of that. Well, there is a field here called request ID. So if this is the very first ticket that came, came in, uh, you know, at the beginning of time or the beginning of, of the system, uh, it's going to be one. And then I'm going to assign it to you. That's going to be the ID is going to be one. But down here for request ID is going to be one. So I'll know um, as I'm looking at the data, I could do a filter or do a lookup mm -hmm. based on that ID and go find the associated data uh, between these relationships. Okay. So those filtering commands on the galleries can get quite complex depending on how many backend you know, lists or databases, tables you're working with. Yes, but you typically only deal with one at a time. Um, now there, there would be an exception that now you can't uh, in databases, there's, um, relational database systems. You have a, a language called structured query language. It's not really a programming language like C or C plus plus it's, it's a query language. So it allows you to query data. And, um, there is a concept called a join. So you can grab data from this table and this table, you can join them together based on these relationships and it will give you a, a one big result set 
from both the the tables in a in a certain way, depending upon how you structure the query. There's no real way of doing that inside of Power Apps. How you sort of do that in Power Apps is you have you use lookups and you use uh, filters. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So I think I think you know as a future one, well, I'll make a note. Uh, really, be I'd be interested myself just to understand when you would you know use multiple lists versus just you know putting everything in one list, and when you do do that, how do you link them together? So uh, I'll make a note of that. Yeah. So as we build out perhaps another related table, as as we build out this application, Barry. Um, so right now we have contacts. Well, each contact might belong to a company. So we could have a companies table, and then then each of these contacts will have a field in there called company ID, and it would, it would refer over there. Um, now I actually have a video. If you do a search in here, uh, YouTube and say Darren Nice relationships. Let's see if it comes up right away. Yeah, it's the first result that says how to set up relationships and powers. And it's a, just a little 12 minute video. And it shows exactly how I set that up. However, we'll be doing all that in this series, just as, as we sort of progress and add on uh, more features and tables and such. Cool. Thanks. And it looks like we have some uh, more comments here. So Victor says, how do you filter between a range of birth dates in this example? Let's say a person older than 30 so that you can use search function in the filtered result is less than 500 and starts with if it's higher. All right. Well, that sounds like we're getting a little complicated, huh? <laughs> sounds pretty complicated <laughs> to me. Um, so what I'd want to do, Victor, is sort of break that down a little bit. Um, and then after we break it down individually, then we could sort of put them together. If you try to uh, tackle one big you know, querying statement, especially if it's your first time, uh, it can be really overwhelming. So I definitely recommend doing one thing at a time. So uh, Barry, I know we uh, what, what we plan on covering tonight is um, search. And yeah. I also put in there starts with, because those two things sort of go together um, in a lot of ways. Um, so we're definitely going to get to that tonight. So um, I, I just, before we get too deep into that, I wanted to ask you about... Uh, all the types of stuff that you do on your website. What's what's the name of your website again? Um, so powerappify.com. So so um, I'm gonna try to type I, that in again. Power <laughs> app I F Y, right? Yeah, dot com. For some reason, yeah, sometimes no, uh, try https www. It's the platform I'm using behind that seems to act a bit weird. Um, when you just type in the power app okay. There you go. I think it yes. needs a www in there. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, what we do uh, here on our website is we develop applications that can be used um, for, I suppose, in entry level teams like IT teams who want to get involved with Power Apps. So, it's nothing too advanced, but it's uh, some applications that you can get up and running in your team. We've got a hardware ordering app. We've got software or service application request app. We've got a a launch digital digital launch pad and we'll be adding more applications in here and uh, basically uh, two of these are free you can just download them play with the code customize them um, just have a look at how uh, we've done things in there and then there is a paid for one uh, which is the it ordering app and that's a shopping basket app uh, where you can order stuff or let's say a user wants to order a new starter kit um, laptop and screens and all that sort of stuff now, are you talking about this one right here this it ordering yeah, app yeah. okay yeah. I have a question. Why are you charging so much for that? Five five pounds ninety nine. So so it, it's really um, a way uh, to learn how to do things. A lot of the work's been done in there. So for me, I'm I'm not out to make a lot of. Uh, I'm not charging a fortune for it. I'd like to right. get people to download it, have a look at it, see how it's done, uh, make it available for people who are interested in getting into power apps but haven't really used it and going well what what kind of app can i build right these apps that i've created here are for it departments or hr departments so i'm working on an hr one at the moment so it's ones okay. that you could you know for a small to medium sized business you can download uh and start using it you know within the day if you follow the instructions and you can customize it for your, your so for, uh, for the price for, for the price of a coffee you could get a fully functional app right yeah yeah Pretty yeah, cool. and even if you, I mean, yeah, it took me a long time to build these, right? So there's a lot of stuff in there 
that you can, if you go in like, oh God, I could spend weeks just trying to understand how to put all this together. Uh, you yeah. could go in here and, and replicate the code, even if you're just learning um, and it's all done uh, done for you. So uh, if, I mean, my my goal for PowerAppify.com is to help introduce people into Power Apps and then get, get them leveraging it and give them some ideas and some uh, use cases uh, and then uh, help them on their journey and get teams more involved. Do you have any like good solid documentation with this? Yeah, yeah. So everything comes with documentation, um, so you can replicate that and use it within your business as well. So there's a list of exactly what comes with those apps in there. So you know, go, go over there, have a look at it, download it, start using it in your business. You know, get it up and running. Uh, and was... it's, not, it's not only the app. It's actually I try and include the whole process. So how do you manage a hardware ordering app? Um, there's some flow charts in there and um, you know, just some general uh, guidance on how to implement it. You know, obviously you got to leverage like a what they call a CMDB configuration management database. So how do you track your assets? So every time you purchase some assets, you want to make sure that the serial numbers are captured, stored in your CMDB. You know who it's allocated to and all this sort of stuff. But asset management's a big, you know, a big challenge for businesses, especially with a lot of people remote working. So these type of apps certainly help. It also helps with the reporting, who's purchased what, how much are you spending, how much do you anticipate, like budgeting, how much do you anticipate to spend versus what was actually spent. So, um, uh, and that's leveraging some of the other tools like Power BI in the back end. That's yeah, I was, I was asking about your documentation. I think I saw a screenshot of your documentation. I was actually really impressed by it. Is it available here, or do you have to purchase in order to see it? It, it comes with the um, it comes with the package. So whenever I make any update, I actually uh, keep it on Confluence. Uh, but whenever I package or make some changes, I download it into PDF, and then just uh, okay. uh, you could just download it with the application. It comes with it. Very cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Cool. So I do um, I do have a request of everybody. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel. And that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. I need to create one specifically for uh, this podcast. Um, okay, so getting back to this application here, uh, we're definitely going to do a search. And um, I want to make sure we're keeping up with the comments as well here. And Victor follows up that to avoid delegation. Um and so, Victor, yeah, I'd like to get around to all that if we do have time tonight. But I'm going to be, be honest, Victor. These are great questions. These are just things that I I, I want to get around to. Um, so let's let's make sure we we catch up to all the comments here. So, Joe Johan, in addition to Roberto's question, is it possible to determine a gallery row number based on the value of this item? Um, yes, yes. Uh, that's a little bit more. Um, advanced, um, it would probably open up a can of worms that we could probably spend a whole hour on, to be honest. Um, so I don't know, um, Barry, I don't, I don't know if, if, if you want to create maybe a, a Google document or something and we'll put in a list or I can start a Google document yeah, and we just no, keep a list of all the things that we want to get to, because, uh, yeah. I know you're asking me before we were doing this session, Hey, what all do we plan on covering tonight? And what I want to do is, is um, I don't want to get to like our 10th video or our 10th episode. And it's like, there are some really good questions that we never addressed. It's, yeah. No, I'll, you know, like, I'll make a note of them. Don't worry. I'll get it. Yeah. And, and just, to, just so I understand that question, uh -huh. is it possible to, to determine a gallery row number? So that would, could you use the ID for that? I mean, is that, would that be the row number or? It, it would be tempting to use it. However, um, that would only work if no one's ever deleted. So if I oh. if I delete your record, Barry, and I added you, you would no longer have two. In fact, there would never be a record with an ID of two ever again. Oh. Okay. So that would sort of mess it up. Oh. Um, otherwise, yeah, you could use the ID. Um, there's actually a, a use case where let's say you've got a gallery here and you want every other record to have like a different color. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people like to do that in, yeah. in like a grid type of thing. And um, you actually do the same way of, of, of how I would show you guys how to do this as uh, Johanna is, is uh, asking about. So, yeah, let's let's circle around back to that one eventually here. And uh, Abdi says, hello, everyone. Hello, Abdi. Oh, he's a Power Apps guru. <laughs> hey, Abdi. Power Apps guru. Very cool. Um, and Data's King is here. All right. Very hello. good. 
Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. I have purchased this app. It's quite good. Also have good guide. Okay. So he's, good. he's actually purchased your, your application. Oh, thanks. Abdi. That's great. Yeah. All right. But that will, but that will course issue on delegation. Um, yeah. So as we um, run up against delegation issues, we sort of want to uh, point that out and we'll sort of talk through that. We definitely don't want to have any delegation issues. We might have some delegation warnings and we'll deal with those appropriately. Okay. So let's get around. And if, if we cover search completely, then we'll go back through these comments and see if we, how many yeah. of these we can answer. Okay. Um, Barry, what do you think? D does this view on the screen look best or does this view look best? I know. Yeah, I think that one. This one right okay. here. What do you guys yeah, think? Do you, what do you guys think in the comments? I mean, yeah. I'm happy with this one. I, don't know. I think if we can get the screen as big as possible, um, yeah. put the, actual, you know, the content well, on it. What my, what my thought is if we put ourselves down here, oh, there we, we might cover up something, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah um, I think that one. Okay, so I'm going to move this gallery down just a little bit, and I'm going to catch this one comment that just came in. Uh, hi, everyone, Sergio. Uh, when creating the data model, do you consider the creation of the relationship columns in SharePoint of the text line type or search type? Um, do you understand what, what Sergio is asking here? When creating the data model, do you consider the creation of the relationship columns in SharePoint of the tech, uh, is it a tech? I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. Can you clarify, Sergio? Is it? I'm thinking, so I always, I always use ID um, yeah. as we've talked about, it's like a primary key. And in the foreign key, what I do in the other table that relates back to that primary key and that other table, I'll create a number value that will, so if, if it's a one in that other table, it's just gonna have a one there. Um, so I always use numeric types for that, unless you're going to be using those GUIDs that we talked about. Um, you could use a text type if if you wanted to. Um, so it's just is is he referring to just the format of that column? Is it a text uh, text format or is it a number format? Is so if 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 that's what he means by that, then the answer is no. Um, if it's I always want that to be a number. Um, you know, if you just have a SharePoint list of, let's say, city names. So, see, we got this little country thing here. We could have a separate SharePoint list and just has one column and just has the names of all the countries. You know, instead of putting that, uh, I mean, names of countries won't change. Uh, hopefully, so that would all. become your primary key is the names of countries because it could. But here's a question for you: If we were using USA as that country name. And mm. five years down the road, we're like, you know, we really want to spell all the country names out. We don't want any acronyms. We want to say United States of America. Then you got to go back and change it everywhere that was pointing back yeah, to that. So that's where it sort of <laughs> becomes problematic. And I think it's a, a it's a poor practice. I mean, you can it's a small project. Who cares? But if it's going to become a large project and sometimes you never know, sometimes people really love the program that you that you create in Power Apps and it grows mm. and grows. And over a few years, it. I'm a huge yeah. application. And that, that's, 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 yeah, a bit of gold dust right there, right? Because you don't want to have to be going and changing something that complicated later on. So, best practice is just use a, a number <laughs> at the beginning, yeah. something that's not going to change. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, to do a search, and what we'll do is we'll do a search probably on uh, the people's name. Okay. So, let's add in a text box where somebody could type in a, some search here. So there's a text input, okay? Now, I don't want the words text input to be there. In fact, I'm going to utilize a property called hint text. Do you ever use hint text? Uh, all the time, all the time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sli slightly great, isn't it? And it just tells the user what to do in that text box without actually yeah, putting some text in there. And what I'll do is I'll make this just as wide as the gallery here. I and and do, you, do you ever use the tool tip as well? Because there's, this, there's the... That, what is yeah. That in fact, as we're setting up the search, we could set this up to do search inside the title. Okay. So the, the names are stored in title, but we also might want to search in, well, let's look at all of our columns here. What if they want to search for phone numbers? That's, that's fairly unique as well. So if you know somebody's phone number and you don't know their name, well, we want to search in that well. So let's say we're going to search for the name and the phone number. Well, we could actually say in here in the hint, hint text to say, search for 
client uh, contact name or phone number, or we could just say search. Mm -hmm. And then down at the very bottom, there's a property that, that you hinted at using this tooltip. And we can actually say searches in contacts full name. Lost focus there. Um, need all that uppercase. Let me make it all uppercase. Yeah, and, and while Darren's typing, it's always useful to put in as much information, right? Because what what might seem simple to you. There's always someone who will come along and go, oh, my God, oh, yeah, well, yeah, and try and break it. So uh, the more help that you can provide for users in the business, the better. Yeah. So let's say I wanted to list out I've got maybe eight columns that the search is going to search on. Well, I wouldn't want to. That would sort of clutter up this bar, right? But now since we have the tooltip, we hover over this, and look at that, searches and contacts, full name and phone number. So we can provide all kinds of information in that tooltip. We, yeah. that, we can't. We, you can't actually change the size of that. I know it's coming quite small there. Uh, generally, it comes yeah. up bigger than that. I thought, but but you can't change the size of that tooltip, can you? I don't know of any way to of yeah. of uh, how to so. do that. Yeah, I haven't come across. I it. believe it. It's it's either controlled by the browser, but I think it's probably more importantly uh, mm. controlled by the system. So like Windows, I'm I'm running yeah. Windows 11. Yeah. So okay. I believe it would probably be. Uh, and it may not, you probably have to make a registry edit change perhaps, or, or some other, uh, mm -hmm. change, um, okay. to actually increase that. But, um, okay. So we've got a little, uh, uh, text box that we could type in here. Okay. So we've got that. And then what we want to do is, um, we need to change our query for our gallery. So we're want to display this here. Um, now I need to make sure I got the gallery selected. I'm going to go find the items property. And that's right here. Okay. There is our filter. Okay. Now let's search. We'll use this as a data source and we'll wrap the search around this. We're, we're going to start nesting these things here. So we'll say search. It's going to be a function. So I've got the um, opening parenthesis and I'm hit control N. And at the very bottom, I'm going to use a closing parenthesis. I'm going to indent a filter. Okay. So the very first parameter that we're going to give the search is the source. Do you, do you see that uh, right where my cursor is moving around here? Mm -hmm. There is the syntax in which we need to use the, 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 I mean, if you ever heard the word syntax, syntax means the rules of the language that you're trying to use. In this case, it's PowerFX. Okay. And we've got this search function within PowerFX. The first parameter is the source. So whatever filter gives us is going to be our source. Okay, that's the first parameter. Now to go on to the second parameter for search, we need to use a comma. And and Power Apps doesn't care if it's you know you nesting things. You, it, there's no limits on in terms of what you can nest, because it's quite easy to get lost in the structure of how the uh, the commands nest in. And I suppose a lot of, a lot of the way of working around that is how you formatted right in that window like you put all the indents in so uh to help you not get confused because if you remove that format it would just be a long line of text which could be confusing right? yeah yeah that's true the the indention that you see me put in there sort of helps keep things straight as things get bigger and bigger and uh, more complicated and when you open it up and it's nice and formatted it looks much cleaner and you see these little vertical lines in here those sort of help you um Keep sorted out as well. Keep everything nice and organized. And um, and data as King says, I have found that adding comments is very important, especially when you have multiple filters and searches. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. for example, um, well, you know what? Um, I'll add comments uh, wh whenever I'm done here. Let me go ahead through here. So text is what we want to search for. Now we let me go over to the tree view control. And I have a name text input, so shame on me. I didn't give that a meaningful name. Let's give it a meaningful name. How should we name our controls? Let's say for a text input, Barry. Well, I normally txt underscore uh, and keep those lowercase. And then I normally yeah. put a, ca a capital underscore and then a capital uh, whatever I call it. Okay. So here, like uh, search criteria. Yeah. Or even just search. Now, I personally, I don't use the underscores there. Is that um, was was that like a best practice from where you were working before, or 
What did you pick up? Just something I'm used used to. Obviously, you know, yeah. It's just, it's, in it's some cases, preference. People, some in some cases, people will put underscores just to sort of separate names and stuff. And um, in some cases, it looks better. So for this case, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the, that underscore in there. All right. So we'll use that. Now I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna hit Control C. All right. Now I'm gonna go back in here. And uh, for the the text that we're searching for, I'm gonna paste in that text box name, the text input, and I'll say dot text. Okay, so that's what we're looking for, whatever's in there. Um, now I'm going to enter another uh, comma there. And for the third parameter, it wants to know what columns. Okay, so I know the full name is is put into the, the title uh, column there. Okay, um, now you notice title does appear down here, but it's got double quotes on both sides. There are some functions that you just can't give it the name of the, the column. It wants it to be inside of double quotes, which means it wants to work with it as a string. Okay. So I'm going to select that title. Um, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to add on another column. So the third parameter is actually sort of, you could have multiple things as the third parameter. So third parameter and also, and uh, going on. So we're going to say phone number. And let's see if we can see it, it is in double quotes there. So I'm going to select that one. Okay, and I'll move that down there. Okay, so oh, we do have double lines here. What do, what do double lines mean when you see them, Barry? Double lines. Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah, well, if we hover over, have you ever seen any red squigglies? Typically an yeah, error. Yeah, 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 it's an error. Have you ever yeah. seen it? You yeah. hover over that line. Yeah. So in this case, we see two double lines. If you hover over that, it's giving us a warning, delegation warning. The search part of the formula might not work correctly on large data sets. Okay, um, that's a common that's a common uh, delegation warning. <laughs> Don't panic absolutely. when you see it. It's yeah, that is the warning. yeah that's the delegation. If you see yeah. that, you might want to think about rec uh, doing things a little differently. Um, so here's the deal with search: if you're working with SharePoint data. Don't want to use search unless you know the data that's in there is never going to exceed that 2000 record limit. And just as a review, I think we talked about this in a previous video, but I'm going to go into settings. So if I go up here to the top, it says settings over here, I click on it. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll see data row limit. The default is 500, and you can increase that up to 2000. 2000 is the upper limit. You can't increase, you cannot increase it any more than that. Um, so if you always know what the data source you're working with is always going to be under that 2000, you can ignore that warning if you want to. Okay. If you mm -hmm. really want that search. Now that search is going to find whatever we type in that text box anywhere inside their full name and anywhere inside their phone number. Okay. But we have a delegation warning. So this statement is going to give you delegation issues. If you're working with SharePoint as a data source, if you are working with Dataverse, you don't have that problem. You need, when you set up that column within Dataverse, say this title here, um, you, there's a little checkbox like allow sort or allow search on this column. You want to make sure that's enabled. I think it's um, set up by default. So if you know you're never going to, you know, search on, you can uncheck it. But so is, is the delegation an actual performance issue or is it a limitation issue? It's a limitation. Yeah. So Power Apps um, can only work with up to 2,000. By default, it's 500. We can set up to 2,000. And um, it really is more dependent upon, um, and really there's no reason for Power Apps to display like 2,000 records on a screen, right? So what you want to do is you want to delegate that query. You want to delegate that work of querying and finding exactly what you want to the data source. SharePoint says, eh, no, I'm not going to do that work. You just take all this data. And yeah. oh, and Paris is like, no, 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 I only want 2,000. You know? Yeah. But, it could be, but, but, but also, I mean, could it be a, uh, a performance issue because you're returning all that data to your app, therefore more memory consumption? You know, could it, uh, you yeah, could it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't had too much. Like, if, if you're working, if you've got like, um, you know, 20 queries on one screen, then I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if okay. you just so have two, or, apps like this two or three queries, worry. probably not that big of a yeah. deal. Um, yeah. If you have somebody, um, 
running your power apps on a device that doesn't have a lot of memory, that could be an issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what I wanted to say there is um, if you query uh, Dataverse in the same way, Dataverse is like, yeah, I'll do that. It won't return everything. It'll just return exactly what you're looking for, you know? Um, so that's sort of like the upside to paying for that <laughs> a premium license. Yeah. yeah. Get that. Um, okay. Um, looking back. And, and with, at, with, with this, so as you type in, text into the text box because you put the text box as being the source of the string that you're trying to search uh-huh. it's it's going to start doing it as you type in right yeah. so it's going to stop yeah well, that's pretty cool so you don't you don't have to have a button there that says search now you know after you've typed it out or anything like that and would 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 there ever be a case where you might want to wait until you've typed it all in and then click search now i can't think of one um I guess it depends it depends it depends on the situation. Um yeah. Yeah, okay. I can't think of one. I don't think so. So yeah. cool. All right. That's that's nifty. So I left data is king's comments up here cuz I just wanted to make sure I didn't uh cuz it's very easy to put these in here, okay? So for the search this is data source provided okay and then come here this is the string of text do, do you go into that level of detail because I, I my habit is just to put a comment at the top of the thing just saying the, the top of the command just going you know this is what it's doing do you actually in, break it up like that something? in something like this i wouldn't um However, I've I've had queries like this that are that could be like hundred lines of code. Right. And in that yeah. case, even if you're the person who wrote the code and you're the person that's maintaining it and you're looking at it a month later, mm-hmm. then um, you still might want to create comments for yourselves. It's really useful if multiple people are working on it or somebody else's. Just, just a point while you're talking about comments, because sometimes yeah, when you create an app, there's lots of hidden properties where you might be writing these lines of code. Uh, somewhere deep in the app and that you might forget where you've actually written the, that code and where it is actually executing so sometimes i, I might put at the comments uh, of a like an on select button that you would always go to on a screen and and then just go well i've set this uh, code somewhere on this property that does this just so it's a reminder like oh actually this is yeah this is where that funny thing is happening within the app yeah, so I wanted to, to talk also about the, the other way of doing comments. So you can have inline comments. So you, uh, you have two forward slashes, and anything after those two forward slashes is going to become a comment. And also I use comments to sort of disable code. Um, so sometimes you're like, oh, I don't need that code anymore. Well, a lot of times instead of deleting it, you might yeah. want to copy and paste from it in the future. Mm-hmm. So I just comment things out sometimes. Um, you can do a block quote. So if you do a forward slash star and then – Somewhere on another line, you do a star forward slash. Everything between those two is going to become a comment. Yeah, yeah, because I've I've done that before. Deleted some code, and then you're going like, oh, I should have left it there. <laughs> so you can always come back and tidy it up later, right? When you know you're definitely not going to use it again. Then. Absolutely. So thanks, data is king, and um, it looks like I I missed one comment up here by my channel. Really good content, guys. Doing episode three in the series, not seeing it as a part of your previous series. Okay. Uh, so that was the last one. I, I If you're on my channel, um, I haven't uploaded it. But if you're on Darren's, I think you did upload it. So um, let's, let's see here. Um, now we do have, this is an, we do have, this is a real podcast where we have an audio version of it. So all three of those, and then this will be added to it. Um, and we're looking into perhaps, um, is that perhaps we need to look into it and see what's involved, but we could actually live cast this to Barry's YouTube channel at the same time. That probably would be helpful so yeah. that everything is, is, it's going everywhere in the right spot. So, <laughs> um, so my channel, um, so everything should be, well, let me see here. Um, if I go into, so I see by this little, um, icon so he is coming from youtube and the only way that i'm that's streaming through youtube is on my youtube yeah. channel right now so 
Um, I'm looking here on my channel. So here we have this. So this is number four. Now, if you go into here, of course, I need to mute myself as soon as I get in here, which I am. I'm going to pause it. Um, in the comments, if you look here, here's all of Barry's links and then mine. But um, here's the, uh, whoops, the audio podcast is right here. Just want to show you that. So we have the first three there, and the fourth one will be there um, soon after we finish this. And that's and great then, for just like if you on the train or whatever, you can't see it. And, and do you think there's still value in the audio one, even though you can't see the screen? I suppose we, yeah, there's, there's a lot of little nuggets that you get on the on the voice side of things as well. Yeah, so, so you're ask you're you're asking the audience if they get value out yeah. of the audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think because it would be worth noting uh, if we need to describe things a little bit more for the audio podcast. If if you guys are going to start listening to that, yeah, we might yeah. we might need to just describe a little bit more uh, of what we're doing in, in in the way that we talk. So uh, that will be, be some useful feedback. Yeah. So um, here is the uh, full playlist as of right now. And um, I really need to put that into the um, the comments of, of all all of the the videos. So um, I'm trying to think. Um, so anyway, those are all there, and then Barry will have them all on his channel as well. Then we have the audio only, um, and we are live streaming to uh, Barry's Facebook group, which is Power Apps Academy. Is that right? Yeah. If you yeah, do a search Academy. within. If you do a search within Facebook, you'll you'll find that there. So we live stream there. Um, yeah, very cool. Very cool. So hopefully, um, my channel, you, you get at what you're, what you're trying to find there. Um, looking at other comments here. So Abdi says for row number to show, use this gallery item. Okay. Do you understand what he's saying there? For row number to show, use this gallery item. Uh, Mm, not exactly. Um, yeah, no. Is that is that what you showed earlier on with, with the row number? I mean, that's uh, the row ID. Or is, yeah. it, is he talking about the count of the rows of what? what row yeah, for count the rows. So yeah, so if I mean, if you look at the me displaying the ID, I am using the this item. So he says use this gallery item. So Abby, could you clarify what you mean by that? Because I don't know of anything that that. Um, like what I would type here to, to get at that. Um, so it's a little, it's a little more complicated. I think it's probably too complicated for this episode to, for me to show how I know how to do it. Um, so we'll, we'll keep that for, for the future. Darren, just yeah. a, quick, a quick clarification. Where it says this item, could you replace that with the gallery name or you do you not need to reference the gallery name in there at all? I mean, is it doing okay, it behind so the scenes? Are you talking about this label right here? Or are you talking about outside the gallery? Well, yeah, I suppose. Could you reference where you've put it in the gallery? Could you reference it outside the gallery and have a like a have that number displaying outside of the gallery? Absolutely. Um, so you know how we use this little GUID here. I'll just use this label here. Um, so the name of the gallery is Gal Contacts. That's a good name for a gallery. Okay. So for this label here, I'll reference the gallery. And there is a property of the gallery called selected. Mm -hmm. And then you can type dot ID and you can get at the ID. Okay. As I click it, so you it's updated. Doing. Okay. Cool. And some people call that linking controls. Yeah. And um, looks like Johan has some good information for us. You can use the delay text input. Um, I think I thought there was a property in there. I, I don't know, Barry, if you were asking me about that or somebody else was asking. Um, yeah. About yeah. No, we said. I think when, when we're going, going on, do we need to uh, yeah add, add a, a search now button to wait for it to finish typing? But obviously, there's a way to do it with the delay text. Delay output. Okay. So I think, and I I do remember coming across this, but I'm I was a little foggy on it. So thanks for pointing that out, Johan. Um, okay. So if we type in here. Okay, so I just cleared it out. Okay, and, and it responded. Okay, so what does delay text or delay input does? So if I, I type in A, maybe it waits a second. Perhaps did, I might have to look that what, up. What did you set on the delay? Uh, what did I set? Input? Yeah. Yeah. So it said false. So I changed it. Oh, to right, true. Right, true. Yeah. Okay. 
and I'm going down. Okay, so he's got some other. I have I have sent you a formula, but I don't see it in the comments. Okay, boom with with records. Yeah, Abby, that is. Uh, I I understand what, what you've got there, but this is right now. We're sort of trying to cover one thing at a time, or trying to cover very at a, at a basic level, and we could get to that, but it's just too much to. And we're already at the we're already past the hour mark right now. So, um, Barry, I, I know I wanted to cover search. I wanted to cover starts with, yeah. and I sort of wanted to put in sort. So Abby, we're going to, um, so if, if you guys are in the chat and wanted to copy his code, you can dump, I'm, I'm have it up on the screen right now. Anybody can see it. Okay. Um, he says, just in case anybody yeah. needs it. Okay. So I'm going to put it back up here just in case anybody needs it. Okay. Yeah. No, th that's good. Thanks. Thanks for that. Abby. And also, yeah, we'll, we'll make a note of some of those, um, those commands that you put in there and we can cover cover them off individually yeah uh, in in late in sessions. fact i think i i remember uh look at matthew devaney try to spell his name right she had something yeah power apps generate row numbers in a collection so if you go to matthew devaney okay and he's got a youtube channel as well so that's what he goes through okay so, um, so you can get it there as well. All right. So let's, um, let's move on. There's one last thing I want to cover here, um, while you're doing searches. And a lot of times you want to be able to blank out what that search has open there. So the text box, the text input, um, I need to start calling it a text input, not a text box. Um, is there is a, a clear button you see over here, clear button. If we turn mm -hmm. that on click in there you can see this little x that appeared all oh, right right and this, so I can what, what, exit out. what was the other one a spell check was there a spell check in there yeah so text box actually can implement the spell check in the browser as well yeah so if i turn that on if i said a r he's got a little red squiggly there and i can oh, right click right. And, ah, okay cool yeah so so i know we focused on uh using a text box because that's probably generally what we'd use. We, we won't go into combo boxes because I know that you know, gets um, quite complicated in, in terms of when you would use it. But you wouldn't use any other input methods for search, would you? It's mainly just those two. Um, I mean, I've, I've never done it. I, I can't see any. I can't yeah, sometimes if I think about any other type of controls, I almost would reach for filter more than anything. Um, but yeah, if you've got like a special string, um, use search, and in order, so there's if you're gonna use uh, SharePoint as a data source, and you don't like that delegation issue. Um, now, one thing to note is, see this where I, I said data source provided. If you know that this filtering is gonna bring it down to two thousand, you can ignore this delegation issue because you're right. down below two thousand. Okay. But let's say we don't know that, okay? So we could rewrite this, okay? So let me copy that. And there is another way of getting around this is to use starts with. And what that will do is it will match up the beginning of the string with whatever we type in there. And it's not quite as good as search, but it's a good alternative. To be honest, have, have you ever ran into that, Barry? I've, I've never used starts with, so it'd be interesting okay. to see how you use it. Let's, let me comment out this code because I don't want to get rid of it. Okay, so now we've got this code. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out, take out all the search stuff and sort of start with what we had before, which is the, uh, the filter there. And, and uh, Abdi says, thanks, Darren and Barry. Take care. Keep the good work. Okay, cool. Thanks. Cheers. And, thanks, Abdi. Keep well. Yeah. And Johan says, wait for three keystrokes. Um, so perhaps that's what it's supposed to wait for is three keystrokes before it actually does the, the search. Mm -hmm. um, so that's I wonder, I wonder what the up. use case is for that. <laughs> wait three keystrokes. Or something. Just in case you made a mistake. You know, maybe if somebody's <laughs> typing really quick, you wouldn't yeah. want all those queries going every single keystroke, mm -hmm. you know, maybe wait for maybe one second for it to actually do the search. Yeah. That, that would probably be a good use case there. Okay. So we've got a filter here. Okay. 
And what you do is you could say and starts with and starts with as a function that returns a Boolean value. And when you're dealing with the criteria parameter for the filter, the second parameter, all of that evaluates to, to a Boolean. So what we had there before in our filter, it evaluated, it, it came down to a true or false value. So we're going to continue that with starts with, and we're going to say, we want this to start with. So it's looking at um, the text. Okay. So we're going to go take the um, text box here. I'll paste that up here. So starts with. And what we're looking for, um, the column, let's say title, is that right? Or is it the, the reverse? I need to make sure that that's right. So I just brought up the um, documentation here. So here's an example. Starts with hello world. And then, okay, so that would be the column in our case. And then the world is what we're searching for. Okay. So I, I had that backwards. So let me take that out. So notice we have no delegation issues. Now, if I start to type in um, Aaron, um, that's strange. I, w I didn't think it would bring me <laughs> Darren. <laughs> and that's sort of weird. Um, probably because I used an or. So what we need to do is make this a little more... Um, Let me comment this because I just want to deal with starts with right now before we get too complicated with the logic. Okay. You notice I don't get anything, but if I type in Darren, okay, it does give me that. So, so, so when would we use the starts with versus the one the easier, um, yeah, the search? Um, also, yeah, the search. If you're working with SharePoint. And you have a delegation concern that right. okay. what you're getting yeah, is too yeah. too much okay. Okay. with the search. So we'll go back in here. And, well, let's say we actually want – there's several ways we could do this, and it depends on what your business need is for the application. I could go in here and say four. Okay. And um, the country here it says show all countries – or it matches the country there. I would want this Boolean evaluation to be executed with this one. I want it, that to be sort of coupled together. I want that to be tested with, within it, itself. I want it to test that. Or it, it matches this criteria here. That's probably what I would do there. So now if I take this out, okay, show all countries. Well, if I go over to the UK, what do we have here? We have, I think what the issue is, it's showing, still showing me everything. See, USA, UK, Germany, because everything starts with an empty string, right? Yeah. So what we need to do, we need to get a more, little bit more complicated here and uh, with our query. And we'll say, well, if the length of that text box dot text is greater than than zero that that way we know that we've got more than than one in there okay um and starts with okay so it's not even gonna um logically it's not even going to use this if this is false because of that and yeah so here we got UK. It's only displaying one person from UK. USA, and we got two there. But now if I type in Aaron, it should have re restricted that. But because we're using that or, 
Um, we probably need to use an and here. Okay, there we go. And it depends. It, like the user's like, oh, well, if I search for somebody, I want to search across all the countries. And other people are like, no, if I pick USA, I only want to search within USA. Um, so it depends on what. So, that, so, so what we're doing there, just so, um, you know, for those who might be a little bit newer to this, is we, we've said, if you just open up that again, we said okay. filter um, our uh, contact SharePoint list. Uh, the country is equal to the drop down selected. So we only want to show people who are in that country or check show all countries dot value. So to, just talk us through again, the, the whole the whole filter command. Yeah. So um, in order for a record to be returned from this data source, it needs to fall into one of these two categories, either yeah. their countries matched up or that checkbox is checked. Okay. And then, yeah. and it has to follow this criteria here, which is um, the length needs to be over zero and it needs to start with whatever we type in there. Right. And then you've nested that in that, that with the brackets, the ors and the and that's all under the log, the logic just after the, 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 co the first comma, right? Yeah. So and, all and now that I'm dealing with it, what would make this much simpler is if we actually nested our filter statements. Okay. So for example, if I were to take all of this, and I'll cut that out. Get rid of some of these spaces here. And then here we filter this. And then if we do it this way, I, I don't even think we need to check for that length. Okay. So it's going to check to make sure something is inside of there and then it's going to return it and then it will filter it down even more. Right. Do you like that better? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Does that give us the same results? Yeah. Yeah. It should. So let's show all countries. Um, okay. Now we have an error. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it doesn't like anything now. <laughs> but 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 I mean this this is quite complicated, right? When we we nesting filters and and even that. So um, yeah, I, I mean so yeah, I, even I, though I, we're yeah, even though we're covering basics right now, as you add more and more logic in, this is typical programmer stuff. Uh, it's stuff that I'm really used to. But yeah, it does get a little complicated the more um, that that you're using logic. Um, you know, even like mathematics you've got or electrical engineering, you've got like uh, doing anding and oaring and, and yeah. using I think, logic. I, I think, I think, I think what, what may, might be quite useful is just to go, just use the starts with, without uh, the other. So just get rid of the country options and just uh, just do a starts with versus a, filter, a search. Mm -hmm. uh, without, yeah, if you're without, using, uh, without using the drop downs and the tick box. So it's just focusing on the text box. That mm -hmm. might you know it'd be easier to understand. That's okay, so you want to use that as an example instead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So let's comment all this, so we don't want to lose it. And that error that just came, I don't know if you if you saw that error message. What that is, if you ever see that, look, it says request operation is invalid. The query is not valid. So um, see, now it's not even giving us the error. It's sort of weird. Uh, when I get a weird error like that, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just close down Power Apps and come back up, and it, it doesn't give me the error anymore. <laughs> Maybe something Thanks, got confused there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what we could do is we could just keep it super simple, and we'll just do the starts with, and we'll get rid of uh, well, get rid of that comma there. Okay. So now none of this, this checkbox doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. And this drop down doesn't matter anymore. Okay. Yeah. So it's if I take checkbox. that out, yeah. it's going to, it's going to look for, let's say both, uh, both of our names start uh, has the letter a in there. I'm going to type in a nope, nothing. What about B we got Barry. Okay. So it's just saying whatever starts with whatever you've typed in there, then it will search for that. And that will help with the delegation rather than it searching as, I mean, they're, they're very similar, aren't they? 
I mean, the search and the starts with. Yeah, I mean, how, how are, quickly does does the starts with start searching in the back? Because I suppose as you type in, it's going to be doing something similar as, as when you're doing the search. Yeah, it would do it um, the way that it does the search, which is right away, unless mm -hmm. you use that property um, delay that, that we talked about here. Um, okay. What is it? The uh, delay input. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's maybe that's the delay input. There. You do the start. You you might do a start with with the delay input. That'll give you some time to do the first few letters before it actually then sends it to the SharePoint list to execute, and therefore you might get around the delegation issue rather than the search, which as you type is going to start doing it uh, right away. So uh, Barry, before when we did the search, we were able to search inside the phone number as well. So mm -hmm. do you know how we would do this? Add on to this particular query to allow us to sort of do the search with the starts with with the phone number. You know what we uh, would do, how we do that? Um, well, I'm guessing at the moment we're searching only in the title, mm -hmm. only in the title column, right? So I got the title there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'd want to add in some. Uh, I don't know. Maybe and so it starts with. Yeah. That's exactly it's right. So we'll do it different starts with, I'm going to just copy that because I like to save myself time there. And instead of going in the title, we can go, go look in the phone. Okay. So it's going to, oh, I don't want to say and because somebody's, <laughs> their name and their phone number isn't going to be, going to start with the same uh, thing. Or, right? or, yeah, yeah. Okay. You use an or. Okay. Yeah. So, well, let's go look at the phone numbers we used here. So there's three of us that start with 999. So now we could type 999. And it should give us the three records. Okay. Or we cool. can type in. Oh, I need to select it. E and it gives us that. All right. Okay. I thought, I, I found that really useful because I, I didn't come into it. I didn't quite understand the difference. But now, uh, thanks to uh, your guys' comments on the on the delay and the keystroke and Darren's explanations, yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel like uh, I understand it 100% now, which is great. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Um, now, did you know there's also a function called that's called ends with? I uh, no, <laughs> I can imagine how it works, right? <laughs> that ends with, which doesn't look like um, SharePoint isn't gonna isn't gonna take that as a delegable query, but it's out there. You could use it if you want to. I don't think I've ever used it, but it's okay. everything ending with ing. <laughs> I'll change that back. Starts with now at the end, what I typically do on the outer nest is I like to sort. So if we have all of our stuff here um, right now, it's just, it's not sorted at all. So let's use the sort. Did we, have we covered sort at all in all of our sessions so far? Yeah, we have, we have. We have. I, I, okay. use, sort, I use sort all the time. And, and it's always something you would put layer on right at the end, right? Because it's quite, quite an easy one just to layer on. I'll do that. Um, I like to make sure everything's indented. <clears throat> so there we go. Sort. The first parameter is the data source. We give it a good uh, table data source. And then the second one is the field. We actually have an optional ascending or descending. Ascending is default. So you mm -hmm. can just leave that off if you always like ascending. But uh, yeah, you're number one. I'm number two. So on and so forth. Cool. So Barry, is there anything else that that you'd like to uh, cover tonight? Or no, I think I think I think we did a good job in I think you did a good job in, in explaining that. No, and um, I, I I think we went uh, I, it got a bit complicated for me with all the nesting. Uh, but I think I think uh, when we broke it apart, that gave a good and a clear understanding of how they are different and how they might be used. Uh, I think you know we sh we we could probably have a look at nesting as we go on just how you layer those on top of each other to get them to work together. Cause I think that could be quite confusing for some people who, who haven't been using power apps that long, but uh, I, I, yeah, that, that sort of stuff comes with practice, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, that it's does. like a nature for you at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I get, I get confused when I have to nest all that sort of stuff, when to use brackets, when to use square brackets. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, that will come with time. But I think for today's session, no, I think we've covered what uh, what we need to. Yeah. 
All right, you want to sign us off? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, um, you know, I hope you guys found that useful. Uh, as always, you know, do keep keep the comments coming in. Let us know if there's anything particular you want us to focus on. Uh, if you haven't mentioned it yeah, and you're watching later, just pop into our Facebook group, drop something on the wall, just some notes of what you'd like us to cover. Uh, as always, you know, thanks a lot, guys, for joining. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good night, Barry. This has been the Power Apps Academy podcast. Darren has over 20 years experience in information technology as a software developer. Barry has over 20 years in IT, helping solve complex issues for businesses, which include improving and automating processes, most recently with Power Platform. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've learned something. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, hit up Barry's YouTube at Power Apps Academy and his website at PowerAppify.com. Hit Darren up on Twitter at DeveloperMCT and on YouTube at Darren Neese. See you next time on the Power Apps Academy podcast.